Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to Webflow and Code, where I teach you the underlying code you're writing in Webflow. Today is going to be a bit of a different episode. I had this idea, JavaScript modules, and I thought I'd do a live, completely live demonstration of how you might add JavaScript modules to your Webflow project. JavaScript modules isn't a new thing. I'm not reinventing anything uh, here at all, um, but it's something we use when you want a sort of JavaScript library um, but you want it to kind of fire off functions only in certain pages or certain circumstances. Let's dive into this and see what we can do. So we built our tap system. Um, let's now talk about how we want it so that every time we use this tab system on, as it stands currently on different pages, that we don't have to worry about the JavaScript firing on um, on the page at all when it's not needed, if it's not there. We added a data module tabs attribute on, on, our, uh, on our element here or our component here or our module here. And let's run through what exactly what we want to do. Well, we want to find, because you might have multiple modules on the page. That's why we went, we've gone with the consistent. If we had a tab system here, it could be a footer with you know like i say the date changes or something like that um we want to be able to use the value here to determine which function to fire so let's not get ahead of ourselves let's just really think about what we want to do here right so we want to find all modules um data mod is it module or modules module module on page right so we want to find all of them um we want to loop through and get the value use the value to fire a specific function um in fact what we're going to do is go window dot modules um, because this is quite a generic name web, web flow modules I don't know something you can name this whatever you want and we're going to create an object from that as opposed to a thing now we can we should actually let's just look into that we should have access to this component now or this empty object on the page there we go there's our empty there's our empty um, on window now all that there it is there so we have access to it um and this is where we're going to contain all of our um functions okay and and that's how we're going to be able to fire these these certain functions based on values so the value of our um our data module was tab was it not back here it's tabs and inside of this object, we're going to put tabs. And this is going to be a function. What I'm going to do is just move my code inside of this. Let's start off by finding all of the data modules on the page, right? So const. Um, equals, and then we're going to find data module, and that's it. I think I have all of our all of our JavaScript in here. What would be another one? Um, scroll, scroll to. This could be all JavaScript that you've written here, and we've got access to all these functions which are namespaced in the, inside of this uh, object. That. let's once again use our convention so we found all of the data modules on the page right now we want to loop through them and fire the respective function that they're they're uh they're denoting so if we were going to do copyright date in fact what we can do is get it working and then i can show you um show you how that works right so 
Webflow modules um, and we can use a function called each and this gives us access to an index and an uh, like an item in the index. So um, again, console.log, whoops, go missed off that. Um, it's just making sure that like what what is happening is actually happening. So just to go back here, we've we've console logged. In fact, you know what? We're going to go uh, index. Um, we're looping through each of the data modules and it's firing this function on each iteration. So we get access to the item. The, the this could again these can be anything you want we could go this we could go mod and then these obviously need to be updated as well um and then we're console logging the actual uh, element that it's found inside of that um jquery object so let's go here and we've got our module here and then the item is zero and we want to get the data we want to get the data attribute of the module so we can do that with plain old javascript module data set um what is it module cool plain old javascript doesn't take a genius to work out what we're going to be doing now um we go window um but just in case you know we can go like this um, we can go like that or we can go window so on each iteration we're getting the data set module which is tabs and um, we're finding tabs within wf modules and we're firing that function and wonderfully all is well we have this working and remember this will only function this will only fire if it finds it on the page if it doesn't find it on the page like you can see we've got a console log here with copyright and we'll just get into that now but these aren't firing we're not seeing a console or copyright but what we can do is we change this to copy uh, right is that how we spelt it? Copyright date. And save that. Publish this. Then we should see copyright date. There we go. Copyright in the in the console there. I was just sitting here looking at the code that I wrote um, earlier, and I noticed a problem that we completely that I completely skipped over. Hence the the change in. Uh, in ambiance um, the final change we need to make to this uh, piece of code here uh, to explain the best I can because we're going to be talking about the context of this um, shortly is that we fire this function but this is still finding all of the tabs on the page so this is still just going to run like we did before. We're not really adding much. So it's going to find all of the tabs on the page and it's still going to work and that's fine. Um, but we're really opening ourselves up to a, to a headache of, you know, potentially two tab systems on a page, you know, um, if you want tab systems on the same page. So we need to re remedy that. Okay. So we're going to be talking about this and like I say this and the context of this. The first thing we want to do is once we've looped through the modules here, we have access to that module. We want to pass this. We want we want to only affect this instance of the module. If there was two on the page, we would go through one and we want to we want to bind the click events to that instance of the module if we go through it again we want to bind the click of the instance of that um module to to the um to the tab system nicer here but we're not passing it anything so um we can just leave it like that so we are calling uh sorry that's the wrong terminology we are firing call um on the 
WF modules tabs method and we are changing the context of, the context of this to mod right what we're going to do is we're going to change it to an old school function like that which actually holds the con the context of this so we can remove the this now the console log um, and just double check everything's fine I mean everything works and that's fine and so now when if we have separate functions and probably these should all be that just to kind of keep it clean and and consistent um, each function will have its own context of this which will be the module and and then you have access to all the individual kind of attributes the individual classes the the different kind of things that um, might exist on that specific instance of the module actually i didn't foresee this but we're going what we're going to do because we've put it in the footer my guess is that this is loading before the footer has a, had a chance to load so what we're going to do is actually place this in the header and this is fine because we're not we're not firing off any um we're not firing any functions so all this is doing um is All this is doing is just placing the code in in the header and we're not we're not like render blocking or doing anything like that we know it's not going to be fired until it's needed uh, on the page so if we come back to here and fire that there we go hello sam because at this point in the page which is towards the top our our list of functions is not ready yet so there we go um, I think, you know, let me know what, let me know what you think about this sort of method or this kind of, um, way of, of doing things. Like, like I say, we're, we're, we're trying to keep the code in one place. So you always know where your, uh, JavaScript is, where the JavaScript you're writing. Uh, let me know if this helps you. Let me know if this kind of, I'll put this code in the comments, um, just so you can use it. I mean, I'd recommend that you type it out yourself, but let me know if you'd use this. Let me know if this is a, a, a like a, a valid solution or, or to to a problem, or whether this problem doesn't actually exist at all. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that we needed to cover here, but I think we're good. I mean, we've got our tab system working. We've got another we've got another function firing from an embed component. Uh, we're able to pass it values and things like that. This episode was taken from a longer, more in-depth explanation of the subject matter. So if you're interested to learn more, then I suggest you click the link up in the card. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please do so. And until next time, happy no coding.